It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Thanks for joining us, folks. A great show I'm going to have for you today. Um, not only a, a good person, but I've got to know this person over throughout the years as a solid person who, when he says something, he lives up to it. Good family man, uh, and he's a great politician. Uh, John Udichak, Senator John Udichak is my guest today, and you probably know things have happened uh, in the last few months um, where John uh, is now an independent instead of being a Democrat, it's independent. However, John, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you very much. Um, before I get to where you are right now, let's go back in history a little bit. Who is John Udichak? You know, you went to high school, you go to high school, college, and then your, your career, so people know about you. Sure. I grew up in a greater Nanticoke area, graduated from Nanticoke High School back in uh, 1988, went on to a postgraduate year at Wyoming Seminary. One of the best decisions uh, that I ever made was to go to that great school and got a tremendous education and went on uh, to Penn State University. And I have my bachelor's degree and my master's degree uh, from Penn State. Uh, I, I'm, I'm blue and white through and through uh, and uh, got a great education because of my parents, uh, uh, Joe and Sally Adichak. My mom has passed now uh, uh, 14 years. Uh, miss her every day. They sacrificed uh, everything for me. Uh, and, and for my other siblings, I'm, I'm, I'm one of uh, eight kids, um, five sisters, uh, two brothers. Uh, uh, and uh, I'm the first in the family to go on to college. So I was the first generation uh, to go on to college. So there was a little bit more expected of me. My father was a little tougher on me. Uh, always my chief uh, political advisor, and that was something I always wanted to, to get into uh, as, as a career, as, as a passion. Uh, and I felt deeply because of uh, the roots. My mother uh, was an ASHBE member, worked at Whitehaven Center and worked at Nanny Coke State Hospital. Uh, and, and my dad was a United Mine Work and then worked in construction and then ran the regional uh, equipment center. So working class, uh, blue collar values. And so I tried to take their work ethic and their passion for their friends and neighbors to the General Assembly. And, and why, why did you decide to go into politics? What was your major in? Uh, I was an English major uh, okay. in my undergrad, and then I was American Studies okay. in, in my master's. My father's been a, a, a politician, been a, a local elected okay. official for probably close to 65 years. In, in fact, we've, we've gone into the next generation. My nephew and my godson, uh, my, my father's grandson, uh, just got elected township supervisor to my dad's old seat in Plymouth Township where I grew up and w where I was raised. And so politics has always been a passion. I think my father uh, had, had always felt that was an opportunity uh, to, to earn uh, another rung on the ladder, that there was an opportunity that not only your family uh, but your community, that you had an opportunity and a responsibility to give back. Mm -hmm. uh, that this is the greatest country in the world. Uh, we have a tremendous commonwealth uh, here in Pennsylvania that uh, we have been given all these great opportunities to make a living, earn a wage, get our kids uh, uh, to school and to a college and or on to a career, uh, that politics was a way to give back and a way to give that opportunity to the next generation to move up the ladder, to grab uh, the next rung on the ladder and help their family uh, move up and get a little bit more prosperity and a little bit more opportunity in their own family. So you, you decided to be a state rep first, right? You ran mm -hmm. the state, okay. So what interest you then, what were some of the interests that you said, all right, I wanna be a state rep, or there things that you wanted to accomplish in, in your district or, or whatever? What, what, what was your, your, your focus on? Well, the key for me uh, at that time, when I came into the state house, probably looking at uh, a near double digit unemployment. Uh, as high as, you know, nine, almost 10 percent unemployment, jobs, economic opportunity, investing in northeastern Pennsylvania, changing the economy of northeastern Pennsylvania. And how do you do that? We had thousands of acres of mines garden land that had to be reclaimed. We formed and created the Earth Conservancy and helped fund that organization over the last 24 years. That has reclaimed uh, more acres of land and put more land back into the Pencho State Forest. We're approaching nearly 50,000 acres in the Pencho State Forest, preserving our mountaintops and protecting the environment. We've reclaimed thousands of acres of mine land that are now producing thousands of jobs, thousands of jobs in the 81 quarter. Ten years from now, you're going to see the 81 quarter is going to boom 
with job activity, economic development, manufacturing jobs, logistics, e-commerce, technology jobs. That's what I wanted to do. That's what I set out to do when I ran in 1996 and then was elected in 1998. And, and now you're seeing the fruits of that 20-year career. When you see in the South Valley Corridor five national companies and 4,000 jobs just in the last 20 months, a half a billion dollar investment in Nanico Canover Township in that South Valley Corridor, it's never been done before. And today I'm proud, uh, not just because of my efforts in the state Senate or in the state house, really a as a community, as a region, we've banded together and now we have the lowest unemployment rate, the lowest unemployment rate in over four decades. That's something to be proud of in this 81 quarter, something to be proud of in Luzerne County and in Northeastern Pennsylvania. Going back to your parents, and, and I always talk about people who have substance. <clears throat> and I've said many times on the show, and uh, I always get kidded. Uh, now they're not gonna, they're one of your friends on Luzerne County uh, Council always says, the only Democrat Sammy likes is John Udichak. And well, that's just not true. But um, I've seen you, as I mentioned in the beginning of the show, I've seen who you are and what you've done. And it's, uh, it's, it's amazing to have people who say what they're gonna do and actually do it. And you've always been there fighting for people. But going back to, uh, to substance, okay, how important uh, is it that you, your parents and your family, you know, what did they instill in you, okay, because that carries forth in your life. Uh, the best example I can give you, my father, uh, you know, grew up on the farms in the, in, in the, in the, in the back country of Plymouth Township uh, in, in the 40s, uh, in, in the 50s, 30s, 40s. He was in Franklin Delano Roosevelt. My grandfather worked uh, uh, for the uh, WPA, uh, building walls uh, when, when the mines weren't working. Uh, and so, uh, but my father's hero was Jackie Robinson with the Brooklyn Dodgers. Uh, and that taught him uh, very early on that everyone has value. Uh, everyone has value. Don't demonize, don't hate. Uh, every human being has value. And, uh, and so that taught me a very important lesson. And so that carried over into politics in this fashion. Uh, I, I never really was concerned about Republican or Democrat. I was never concerned about someone's p political persuasion. Uh, I was more concerned about their value and their values. Uh, and, and, and so those values instilled in me remain the same. It doesn't doesn't matter what political party I'm aligned with. I happen to be an independent uh, today, but the values that I brought to the job in 1998 and carry through today are the same because they were values instilled in me by Joe and Sally Adichak that said, you value all people. Uh, I, I'm not going to get up every day, unfortunately, on the Republican side of the aisle and the Democratic side, uh, purist, uh, these purist politicians who want 100%. You've got to be 100% with their issue or you have to be demonized. I'm not gonna go out and demonize anyone. I'm not gonna go out and wake up every day and hate the other side. That's where we've gotten in this toxic conversation in politics, whether it's national level or, or in the Commonwealth. And I decided I'm gonna reflect the values of my parents, I'm gonna reflect the values of Northeastern Pennsylvania, and I'm gonna be passionate about serving their interests, the folks of Northeastern Pennsylvania. And I think the conversation, unfortunately, is driving out our ability to get things done, real things done uh, for people in Northeastern Pennsylvania. We would never have been able to achieve uh, the South Valley Parkway, $90 million infrastructure project, if we didn't have Act, under not, Act 89 under Governor Corbett, that were Democrats and Republicans that supported Act 89. But there were those on the fringes of both parties that did not support Act 89. There are folks that are not interested in getting things done. They're interested in advancing the goals of a political party yes. rather than the people. I want to focus on people over politics. Which gets me to the point when you, when you went into politics, and I had a little touch of it when I was the chairman of the LCC, and I saw the many uh, how agendas start being formed, and if you didn't go, they try to frame you, and they did a whole mess of things, okay? Uh, a little touch. So I can imagine as being a state rep and, and a um, you know, state senator, what you encounter. Uh, how do you cut you know, the, the BS? How do you, you know, because you have the staunch, uh, the Republican staunch Democrats, and no matter what it is, it's right down that. We still have people like that, unfortunately, John. How did you cut through that? Well, I think, you know, I've always been a moderate voice. I've always sought uh, uh, coalitions. I've always sought collaboration and tried to build that. And, and really, it's about establishing friendships. I, I've developed many great friends over the years on the Democratic side of the aisle and the Republican side of the aisle. Getting to understand 
uh, uh, someone's values, getting to understand where they're from and their family uh, and, and what they're passionate about and how they can serve their district. Look at, we have uh, regional diversity in, in, in Pennsylvania. Uh, we have great urban centers in Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, and we have rural areas uh, all, all across the northern tier. Uh, you have to bring those two to form a, a, a commonwealth and to serve the greater good. You better understand those differences. You better celebrate those differences rather than demonize them and rather to use them as, as, as a source of division. Uh, I, my politics has always been a, a politics of inclusion. Uh, the fringes, that's not my politics. This move really is about changing that conversation. And I think that's how we can change the conversation. Uh, we did away with straight party voting. Uh, Governor Wolf signed that legislation, the first major reforms uh, in, in, in our election policies in over 40 years. Changing that, I think the next move would be to allow independents to vote in the primary. I think you're seeing the, the, the fringes of the party, the purists and the Republican and Democratic side dominating the conversation in the primary, and we're getting candidates that really don't reflect uh, the broad diversity of our community. We're getting candidates that reflect a narrow partisan interest of a political party. We need to move away from that in Washington and Harrisburg, and hopefully in some small way, my move to the independent party will drive that conversation in a more positive, moderate direction that serves all, not just a narrow few. When you look at today um, what's happening nationally, uh, you know, with um, the president and what's happening in Congress, um, how do you feel? Because you, you, you see 80 percent of the press today um, hammering Trump, maybe even more than 80 percent. Um, I'm sure he's not perfect in all areas, but as a politician, you begin to see that. And you're even getting a little hit now because you were great when you were a Democrat, but now you're an independent. And now you have some liberal papers that want to give you a little shot for whatever reason. All of us that you didn't change overnight. You still were the same person. But here's where the, the that I become upset, John. I, 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 I get upset because when I look at the news today and I see it biased. And if it was the other way around, I'd still be upset if it was for, uh, for a Republican. And, and then it carries forth in our areas, all right? And that's upsetting to me. I can imagine how you must feel as a, as a state senator. What led you to make your decision leaving the Democrat Party and becoming an independent? Well, a big part of it, you know, uh, my father, again, back to my parents and their values, my father, uh, stubbornly independent in, in, in his thinking. Uh, he's a Democrat, Roosevelt, Franklin Roosevelt, Democrat, uh, and, 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 but that's one thing that I inherited. I've always been stubbornly independent. I never liked the idea that you have to follow a purist ideology. Uh, 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 ideology and, and clinging to partisan ideology doesn't get the job done. That may make you feel good by turning on MSNBC or turning on Fox and feeling good because you're in the echo chamber. And worse, and a big part of this, and where I've really seen the, the toxicity of the conversation uh, increase, is social media. Social media allows us to, to this false narrative that you've got to have politics of us versus them. Yeah. I've uh, chosen the politics of we. Mm -hmm. We're in this together as a community, uh, as families, uh, as, as Pennsylvanians, as Americans. There are big challenges, uh, whether it's uh, fighting the war on terror, whether it's building the bridges, whether it's growing the economy, whether it's protecting the environment and fighting climate change. They are big challenging issues. To think that that can only be solved from a Democratic perspective or Republican pr perspective is it, just foolhardy. It's a fool's errand. It's a false choice. We really need to come together, do away with the labels, and get back around the table Everyone, conservatives, Demo uh, conservatives, uh, 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 moderates, uh, all, uh, all flavors of, of thought need to be around the table to solve these big issues. Uh, folks, I'm talking to Senator John Udichak, as you know, was a Democrat and now is an independent, uh, talking about substance and talking about what are the challenges ahead. What happened internally? Because, you know, you were with a group and all of a sudden you change. You know, how, do they, how do, will they treat you or will they come, you know, I'll fix this guy now. When, this, when he wants to do something, I'll fix him. Is that going to exist uh, in our state of legislature? We hope not. We'll be back right after this.
Welcome back to the Sam Sancho, folks. Thank you for the emails. Remember, my email is sam at ssptv.com. Uh, no longer the app. However, go to our website. All the shows are there. Very easily to go through them. You can watch all the shows we produce. Uh, my guest is Senator John Udichak. And as most of you know, uh, Senator John Udichak was a Democrat and be, decided to become an independent. All right, so you, you made your decision, you know, after talking to your, the closest friends that you have, particularly your, your dad, and you decided to announce. Who did you announce it to first before you went public? Well, be before I went public, and, and I chose a specific day. Uh, November 19th uh, is the anniversary of the Gettysburg Address. Okay. Uh, President Lincoln came to Pennsylvania and delivered that uh, uh, one of the most famous speeches in American history on a battlefield that reflected uh, uh, our country at its most divisive time. Uh, uh, we are not taking up arms against one another, but it is still a very divided time in, in our body politic. And so I chose that day and I went to the Democratic leader, uh, uh, Jay Costa, who I have a great deal of respect. Uh, uh, for Senator Costa. I know him and his family well, uh, and he works very hard. Uh, and, and it's challenging times uh, to, uh, uh, to be a leader in Harrisburg and, and, uh, and kind of talk through uh, my deeply personal decision. It's not a reflection uh, on, on Senator Costa or any of my Senate colleagues. I have many dear friends and, I, and, and, and uh, consider many of them uh, you know, great leaders in the General Assembly. This was, this was personal, this was a reflection uh, of, of, of my values and the values of the people I represent much more than it was a reflection uh, on the Democratic Party. I don't see it as, as distancing myself from the Democratic Party and embracing uh, the independents or the Republican Party. This is really an evolution of me personally that, uh, that I think we need to change the conversation in Pennsylvania. So I had that conversation and I have many friends that are gonna re remain friends. There are some that are more partisan that, that, that see this as a setback for, for either their personal goals or, or, or the goals of the caucus. And, and, and that's unfortunate, but I'm gonna continue to work uh, with everyone as I have. I, I've always put uh, uh, getting things done over political parties, I always put uh, my values over the narrow interest of, of, of partisan politicians. I mean, we've, we've made some votes down there over the years that, that really have shown my independence from the very beginning. Uh, when they had the, the pay raise and the pension hike, there were a lot of Democrat and Republican leaders in both parties uh, uh, that felt uh, that, uh, that I would not have a career uh, in Harrisburg because I went against the political bosses, uh, that I didn't do the conventional thing and support uh, those uh, pay raise and, and pension hike. Uh, when it was a decision, I, I sought counsel again of my father and, and he said, you know, talk to the folks back home. Tell them what you have, tell them you need it 50% better than you have it right now. You need 50% more in your pocket uh, to do the job representing them in Harrisburg. I said, Dad, they'll never, they'll never think that's fair. And he said, that's right. Always reflect the folks back home. All this decision in terms of moving to an independent, all it is is about reflecting the folks back home and representing them to the best of my ability. And I think being an independent gives me that opportunity to represent Northeastern Pennsylvania better than I ever did before. Well, now, you know politics very well. And some people, as you said, there was an act uh, that Corbett put in. Some people just wouldn't do it because they didn't want to give him credit, Correct. all right? And so now you made a change. And so now uh, I'm a Democrat senator. And if I make John Udichak look good, that means that what he did was okay in our book, okay? Because you know right now the Democrats are, are not in power. Uh, this doesn't make it easier for them. Uh, do you think that's going to be a challenge for you? Well, I'll give you a good example. It, it happened in uh, last week, the uh, minimum wage, number one issue for Governor Wolf. Governor Wolf has done a great job on, on a minimum wage issue, uh, uh, campaigning all across the Commonwealth, trying to get uh, Republicans to come on board with raising the minimum wage. We haven't done it in a decade. It's been at 725 for a long time. We're talking about bumping it up to 950. I was able to work with Democrats and Republicans on the floor uh, and get that bill out of the Senate by an overwhelming margin, gets over uh, to the House, and hopefully we can get that bill 
to the governor's desk. And I've had uh, conversations with Governor Wolf. He clearly understands I disagree with him on the decision to and on the proposed closure of SEI Retreat and, and Whitehaven Center. Very vocal uh, in my opposition, but I do it in a professional way. I do it out of respect. I respect the governor, uh, and I agree with the governor on many issues. And in a conversation with the governor on minimum wage, on the environment, on energy policy, we're going to be on the same page. Uh, and I say that to my Democratic colleagues. There's going to be issues uh, where I'm going to vote, uh, as, as I always have voted strongly with the Democratic Party on issues of education and environmental policy. Uh, and there may be disagreements that we have on, on other issues uh, and on some other social issues. But we're always going to try to find a way to choose the politics of we over the ch politics of us versus them. That really, to me, I'm not going to get up every day and hate the other side just because I disagree with them. I'm going to find a way to build common ground because if you can build common ground and you have common sense, you can get things done for Northeastern Pennsylvania. And that's, that's what we want to do over the next three years, just continue to get great things done, like building that South Valley Parkway under, under a Republican administration, creating 4,000 jobs under a Democratic administration. The political parties mean less and less to people when they sit down at their kitchen table. Mm -hmm. There's really bigger issues that those families face in terms of their child's education, health care for the family, and job opportunities. They're not Democrat and Republican issues. They're family issues. And I'm here to help the families in northeastern Pennsylvania. So far, mm -hmm. Senator, have you um, been able to um, work? Uh, I know you just said you have the people that you're working with. Uh, have you been able to communicate with both sides and let them know exactly where you're going to go? On, on particular issues? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> I'll continue to communicate uh, uh, with, uh, with my colleagues in the Senate. That's how, uh, uh, that's how things get done. You have to build coalitions. There's no way a minimum wage bill would have gotten done if there wasn't Republican support. Uh, mm -hmm. They controlled the chamber. They could have shut that path down. But uh, the governor uh, and Governor Wolf and his team did a great job in building a bipartisan coalition. That's how any of the major pieces of legislation get done. Mm -hmm. Very rarely do you ever see a piece of legislation get done where it's just the Democratic Party, the Republican Party. It takes a coalition, takes consensus and common ground to do the big things. Pennsylvania and Washington, D.C needs to get back in the business of doing big things for the people back home. The only way they can do that is if they can put this partisan politics Ooh. aside and, yeah. and come together uh, and, and, and get things done for people. Well, I hope it, it, it becomes contagious because uh, Congressman Muser on my show uh, recently uh, voiced the such frustration of what he is encountering there and trying to do what he was elected to do. And uh, speaking to Congressman Barletta, the same thing what he encountered when he went down there, you know, the bipartisan and, you know, uh, so it's, it's sad in a way, but it's good that you are able to get what you've accomplished so far in the state of Pennsylvania. Future plans? We're going to continue to work hard for the, for the people of northeastern Pennsylvania. There's no grand design here. Uh, this really is a personal evolution in terms of what I feel needs to change. We need to change politics. I went to Harrisburg as a young guy uh, in, in 1998 to change the perception of politics, to change how we do business, and I think we've been very successful. This is an evolution of that. This is a next level, and hopefully this can be contagious. There are some great national organizations that you're starting to see pop up, like No Labels, uh, out of Washington, D.C., to say, Let's get Republicans and Democrats working together again. Let's get people working together, find common ground, and let's get things done for real people, real people here that I care about in northeastern Pennsylvania. So now, Senator John Udichak, I know you a long time, and I have yep. the greatest respect for you. Uh, I'm going on maybe 3,800 or 3,900 shows I've done. I want to be have one of those shows where I'm, I'm going to say, Governor Udichak, welcome to the Sam LaSanne Show. So, uh, let that happen before, you know, I hit 5,000 <laughs> shows. I wish you the best. Uh, really, you're a good person. You've always been good, sincere, and honest. And that comes from a great family, you know, and I, I only hope that, you know, you're able to do the best. And, and see, I think, you know, our relation, the great person, which I cherish, yeah. that we have this good relationship, shows you 
that a rich guy and a poor kid could get along together there very well. We go. can find a way and find common there. ground. Yeah, I, I'm a lucky guy. First he said, you're lucky. I said, you know, it's funny. The harder I work, the luckier I become. Yeah. It's amazing. John, I wish you the best. Thank okay? you. Thank you, Folks, uh, Samuel Sancho, remember SSPTV.com. You can watch all of our shows. We'll see you next time.